Karthik, welcome back. Uh, you know, we were talking before the break about uh, building this brand sort of for consumers. Um, I, you know, for an alcohol company, it's not very straightforward with all the restrictions that you have on advertising. So, you know, how do you go about, uh, you know, establishing this brand and this connect with customers, especially when you're launching new products in the market? Well, so we, uh, we take a great deal of pride on the multinational we're building here in India, compliance-wise. Mm -hmm. Uh, do consider ourselves to be a company that has stood the test of time in the last 15 years in figuring out how a multinational can operate despite uh, you know the very complex sort of business environment that we have here at mm. times prone uh, to various kinds of regulatory challenges that could inhibit the business growth advertising of alcohol is one such you know business complexity we've been very clear we want to be respectful of the law of the land to give you an anecdote uh, we have internally uh, a measurement of brand love that we call brand power. Okay. Uh, this is the exact same study we do in all our markets. We're very proud about the idea that while Budweiser in India may be the fourth largest market for the brand, as far as brand power is concerned, hmm. India ranks number one, which means the maximum love relative to local consumers is the highest for the brand in India, which also gives us confidence about it being uh, one of our biggest markets in times to come. Well, speaking of it becoming one of the largest markets in times to come, um, I know the global companies invested about one and a half billion dollars here so far. But you know, could you give us a sense of you know how much more is lined up? Uh, you know, given the strategic importance of the market, and you were saying perhaps in a decade or so we could see it becoming one of the top markets. I think for us, when we talk about the investment outlay for the next 10 to 20 years, I could not be more clearer as the head of the Indian business unit that we have stakeholders outside India who are so short on the India thesis, if you will, yeah. that if we see continued evolution on our policies, namely hmm. tax differentiation, which hmm. does not club beer and spirits together, namely this idea that, remarkable as it may sound, we pay taxes in advance of our product being sold, which is a terrible amount of working capital intensity for any business, doesn't matter if it's the business of our size or a business that might be 10 times our size, mm -hmm. to be able to shore up that kind of capital in ahead of your sales yeah. uh, is just a very lopsided nature of how businesses otherwise in other categories thrive. And then the third, of course, being you remarkably for a population of our size have literally 80,000 points of sale and you compare that to, to where CPG products or, are sold or, and you're talking yeah. north of 8 million. I think we feel quite optimistic that these three intrinsic barriers for exponential growth, not incremental growth, hmm. if slowly but surely we overcome these, you know, structurally at a market level, I think the investments we've made here in the last 10 years would pale to what we'd make in the next 10, 20. You know, we'd also like to cover what your personal journey here at AB InBev has been like. In 18 years here, you've literally, uh, you know, had an entire adult life working for AB InBev. How does someone, uh, I mean, what's it been like? Well, one word, exciting. Uh, two words, extremely humbling. Hmm. Uh, this is an amazing company uh, that was love at first sight. Uh, but, you know, the, the test of any long relationship is on how you continue to fester the love. And I think uh, AB InBev has just become a deeper part uh, of not just my life, uh, but my family, my friends, I'm the bear guy for them, uh, I'm the tax guy for them, uh, I'm the cash flow guy for them, uh, the number of times I actually speak on these topics. But most importantly, uh, this is a company that has allowed, I think, for my family to actually be very proud of what I do. Uh, and that fills my heart with a lot of joy, that when we extend that same idea across the 2,000 odd people that directly, and 5,000 odd people that work indirectly for us here in India. Hmm. I've heard this anecdotally many times in town halls, many times in skip level meetings and hmm. interactions that uh, whenever they read something unsavory about a certain act, a certain behavior, a certain corporation or an individual hmm. in a senior position behaving in a manner that wasn't uh, above board, uh, there is a conversation over a dinner table that goes, we're very happy you're working with AB InBev. Who is Karthik Aya Sharma outside of AB InBev? What more could you tell us? Well, I'm a guy who loves spending time with my family. Uh, I absolutely now unapologetically tell people hmm. the first, the most uh, unarguable uh, love of my life is my daughter. Uh, she's turned four. 
Uh, every single second I can eke out of life, I spend with her, uh, trying to get to know her, trying to have her get to know me. Usually works the other way around. Uh, <laughs> she's probably got the personality uh, that can fill up a room. And so it's just, you know, the honor of my life to be able to get to nurture her and parent her. The second love of my life uh, happens to be this idea of being able to sit down with friends and family and talk about, you know, where the world is going and talk about, uh, you know, how all of us could be good people. Uh, and the third love of my life in that order now is AB InBev, which for a very long time was <laughs> the first love said. of my life. So, <laughs> Well, Karthike, it's been a pleasure speaking with you and thank you very much for your time here. Thank you very much. Likewise.